This conversation is inspired by the tragic events that have recently occurred in Uvalde, Buffalo, Tulsa, and many other mass shootings that have taken place all over the country. The question that we will be talking about today is, what roles have guns played in our lives? This question is taken from the Guns and Responsibilities Guide that can be found on the Living Room Conversations website. So I'll start us off. My name is Helen. Um, I'm currently in New Jersey. And I think for me, the answer to this question, um, I haven't thought about it in a while because I've been in college and I d I've definitely um, been exposed to news about gun violence, but like where I've lived, it's been pretty safe. Um, where I live in New Jersey is also pretty safe. So I think when I, when I think about this question, I think about like my childhood and like kind of doing like code red drills, which is, which are like um, sort of lockdowns, school lockdowns. Um, and I think like, I forgot how sort of like scary those were <laughs> to some extent, because I, I do, I do like recall now that when I was little, I used to just like feel like, oh my God, like this is, this is a possibility. Like one day someone could come to our school and like, um, I don't know, like I could be shot. And I remember like there were police officers that would come to our school to sort of like make us feel better about it. And it was one police officer that was like, actually your school is like the safest place you can be, like whatever, whatever. And it's definitely hard to believe that now because it's sort of like when you hear all this, you're like, you know, it's sort of like that association your brain makes um, automatically with like school and like getting shot at school. Um, it, I think it sort of is just like something that I had to live with back then to a certain degree. Um, so I think um, when I think about that, it's sort of, um, it makes me feel like the issue of gun violence is, it's like very multifaceted because there are also different kinds of gun violence. Like there's gun violence, just like shooting in the streets, maybe. There's also just like specifically the case of a school shooting. There's also like mass shootings um, in like crowds and things like that. And I think um, what's made like school shootings so jarring is just that you know, school is supposed to be this space where you're safe. And it's sort of where we send our kids to be safe and to learn. And it's supposed to be a sort of sanctuary. Um, and if they can't be safe there, then like, what is going on? It's like, it's an educational crisis. And, um, and maybe Crystal has more to say about like, whether this is possible or not. Um, but it's like, I don't know what, what role like, teachers can really have in this like um it's sort of a question of can we increase like funding to teachers to help give students better or like guidance counselors to help give them better um resources to help kids with like mental health if like a lot of times it is kids that are like responsible for the shooting or like can we do we increase security in schools do we like have like automatic locked doors. Um, like one thing I realized is after um, I left my middle school, um, they actually started having like very, very like highly um, high security and they would like only have one entrance. Like no one could go in unless you were a current student or staff member. Um, and um, one of like my friends who was like in middle school after I left, she told me like one of her friends tries to sneak in to like meet with her old friends or something and like a security team escorted her out. And that wasn't the case when I went to middle school, like I could just go in freely, like the doors weren't locked and you could argue it was kind of unsafe, but that was just how it was back then. And I'm just like, have things changed a lot or ha have we just like adapted to the times? Is this something that, um, inevitably like we need to adapt to um and i think another thing that it's made me think about is just like how are people thinking on the other side of the aisle because um i want to understand and i want i think um this is something that can only be solved if we try to like find some sort of middle ground um because there are people who i i imagine do have their reasons for wanting to 
keep guns and like own guns and who don't want to have like increased security measures for some reason um and i think like maybe like this these events have sort of like sparked that desire to have that conversation um i i i know like there's talk about like having red flag laws which are basically like um your relatives or coworkers can sort of like petition to remove a firearm for, from someone that they feel like maybe a danger to themselves or someone else um and that hasn't really been implemented in a lot in a lot of states it's only been implemented in a few so i'm i am curious like what are the reasons that these there has been opposition to this and like is there something missing um is there some sort of like solution that we can come to with more dialogue so those are my thoughts yeah i agree with you helen i think from um, my perspective. So I, my name is Sophia and I am currently 17 years old and I am located in the Boston area. So I'm still at a high school currently and um, I go to a private um, school. So I think because of the circumstances, we've actually not given um, as much attention to gun violence as Helen has mentioned. So for example, I think the only instance that I remember our school bringing up gun violence um, was a few years ago, maybe two years ago. And we watched one video of uh, possible ways to like hide on the table or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly don't remember it too well because it was really short and we, um, yeah, didn't really provide a lot of context for it and it was over after the video was over. So um, I think recently seeing the news um, made me realize how, you know, this is not only just a problem for society as a whole, but it can target more uh, sub some groups, maybe more so than others, given um, either socioeconomic status or honestly, you know, like what families or what neighborhoods um, you live in. So in a way it's kind of um, an equality question too, because uh, the amount of risk that different people are exposed to might differ depending on where you live, um, what type of school you go to. And I think that's, you know, really against the whole idea of education and just life in general. And um, for me personally, I think it's not about what the guns do or what they have them, but what they can do that really scares me because, you know, it, when you have a specific target, um, what if it's not the target that you actually harm in the end? Like it, I think it's just the, the possibilities that come with having a gun that really uh, makes me uh, concerned about its um, existence and use specifically in terms of school shooting. So as Helen mentioned, um, I think the middle ground is the way to go. Um, and I think it's really hard to have those conversations, especially when you know, people might be doing it for, for different reasons. And some people, they might be doing it for fame, which um, is one of the reasons that news don't tend to mention the names of the shooters as um, often anymore. And so, yeah, I think conversations and honestly, finding the deeper causes that um, are roaming in our society currently. So say, for example, racial inequality and, um, you know, gender issues, uh, all of these bigger issues that honestly we have already been um, talking about might play um, a role, a bigger role than we might think they do um, in terms of culminating to um, an environment in which such violence can take place. So um, yeah, I would say I am personally um, willing to and am actively trying to um, reach out in my zone at least um, and to try to understand others in a way that is both rational and also empathetic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Hi, my name is Haley. I'm 16. I'm a sophomore in high school near Seattle, Washington. So I would just like to say that I completely agree with what Helen and Sophia had to say. And for me personally, coming from a country where gun violence is not an issue at all, it was really difficult for me in a sense that I had to get to used I had to get used to hearing news about shootings in places near me and having to cope with just knowing that this is an actual issue that I'm going to have to learn to deal with because it's I'm in a new environment and it's something that is happening around me and so hearing the number of mass shootings that have occurred in schools and just in the communities it's really scary for me that knowing that one of these days I might be exposed to the risk of being shot. And this has never come, I've never been exposed to these kind of thoughts before. And so it's personally been really scary for me. And with the recent shootings in the schools, um, me, I know that me and my friends have kind of developed some sort of anxiety. When we see people pulling stuff out of their bags in school, we tend to get really anxious. And so I feel like this is not something that students should be worried about, especially in school settings, because Schools are supposed to be a place where students can feel safe and focus on their learning and not develop anxiety just by seeing people pull stuff out of their bags. And so I feel like many youth are developing this kind of um, stress and mental health issues because of the number of gun violence um, problems that have been rising all over the country. So I know that we have to try to understand the people who are behind these shootings because they might be suffering from some problems that we are not aware of but i also really want to understand why they're doing this because to me it's not really humane to be killing other people and also i just feel that there should be more mental health resources available for students in particular after all these shootings so that they can talk about how they feel and maybe have more conversations around gun violence and how people can take action to actually spread awareness and just advocate against gun violence. So those are my thoughts. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I My name is Crystal Williams. I am Living Room Conversations uh, Racial Equity Partner, and I also teach high school in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and when I think about the roles that guns have played in my life, uh, I was in middle school when Columbine happened. Um, I remember uh, I was sitting in health class when we found out about it. Um, and then when I went home that evening, like, of course, uh, my father and I like watched the news. Um, and then when I was in high school, actually, it was the first time I ever saw a gun in person. Uh, it was at high school. Um, there was a, a student who um, sold drugs and he had a gun to protect himself, he told me. Um, when I was a kid, we did not have any sort of like code red drills or anything like that. But now that I'm a teacher, it's something that we do, um, I would say regularly, uh, for my school district, uh, I teach in Cleveland. Um, but then when I think about like my niece who goes to a suburban school in the Cleveland area, um, she has them, they have them more frequently than I do at my school. Now, part of that could also be, she's in elementary school. I teach high school. Um, I, the shootings happen so often, uh, that sometimes I'm afraid that, I am almost becoming desensitized at times because it, it, they just seem to happen so often. Uh, and that's not okay. Um, I definitely think that we need dialogue around this issue, um, but we also need to take action. And, and one of the things we do here at Living Room Conversations is just provide resources for people to be able to have conversations in their communities. Um, so if you are interested in having a conversation, again, this is from our uh, Guns and Responsibility Guide. You can go to livingroomconversations.org and download it um, and host your own conversation. Um, but we wanted to just, as a youth council, talk about this um, and get our thoughts out there. And we would love to hear any responses that you may have. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Bye.